Christoph Waltz is here. For 30 years, he worked as an actor mostly in German television with no major English language credits to his name. Then along came Quentin Tarantino and his unconventional World War II film, Inglorious Bastards. Tarantino cast Waltz as Hans Landa, a multilingual Nazi colonel who considers himself a detective. Here is what I mean. Take a look. So you're the Jew hunter. I'm a detective. A damn good detective. Finding people is my specialty, so naturally I worked for the Nazis finding people. And yes, some of them were Jews, but Jew hunter? <laughs> Just a name that stuck. Well, you do have to admit, it is catchy. Do you control the nicknames your enemies bestow on you? Aldo the Apache and the Little Man? The German's nickname for me is the Little Man. And as if to make my point, I'm a little surprised how tall you were in real life. I mean, you're a little fellow, but not circus midget little. He has already won the Best Actor Prize at Cannes, a Golden Globe, as well as the Screen Actors Guild and Critics' Choice Award. He is also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. I am pleased to have him here on this program uh, this evening. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you get a script. Hmm. Tell me where your acting life was when you got this script from Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, you know, for, for, for the region, it was satisfyingly okay. Um, for me as a person, it was frustratingly not okay. Meaning that, that um, you know, the, the Germany is very much of a, or the German-speaking area. If you um, look outside the theater, because, you know, theater is really still very alive and every bigger bigger town has a subsidized theater so I did theater for many many years in terms of movies it's somewhat limited so most most of it is television so not not really all the time the most inspired television as such so so you know you you get a certain reach a certain limit in terms of what you can sink your teeth in and from mm. then on it becomes a little tough how did you come to the attention of one of America's most prominent directors? Yeah, that's um, a mystery. It is a mystery? In a way. I mean, it was, uh, it, there's, there's a, um, um, a casting director in Berlin, Simone Beer, and she does most of the international productions mm -hmm. there. And, and she just got people together for Quentin to meet. Because Quentin, being Quentin, said, all right, the, these German <laughs> parts <laughs> yes. will be played by German, or at least German-speaking, native-speaking actors, and the French part will be played by French, you know, and we will not do that usual blue contact lenses, bleached hair, funny accent business. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, um, and so, so I was one of the German actors to be invited to a casting. And then you read the script. And then, um, well, I, I kind of weighed the script in my hand at first. <laughs> the whole know. thing. The whole thing, you know, <laughs> heavy. Yes. And I scribbled um, title page, you know, handwritten. Yeah. So it's it's fantastic, you know, because you, you get a feeling of Quentin as a person right away. And, and then the audition. And then the audition. First of all, you know, then you, you, I read the script, and uh, that wasn't all that easy. And um, I reread it, and um, then the audition. And there, you know, you expect this zany, enfant terrible kind of wild guy. Yeah, Mr. Tarantino. Mr. Tarantino. <laughs> yes. So everything we know about uh, Mr. Tarantino. Yes. And, and um, you get in the room, and, and there's this, this um, refined gentleman, immensely polite, and he asks you to sit down and converses, you know, funnily um, inspired, and then asks, asks whether mm. you would mind to read. And um, I thought, are you kidding? But, um, you know, I said, well, no, actually, you know. Quite prepared to read. Yes. <laughs> and he plays all the parts. Yeah. Except for the one that you're reading for. And you do, and, and we went through the whole script. The whole script? The whole script. I mean, uh, the, the whole part. Right, right. You're, you're, yeah, exactly. The whole part. And then, you know, it was one thing led to another, and he was playing all the things, and I thought, well, that's remarkable. Why, I thought, is he sucking his thumb? when he played the farmer, because it was only yeah. until I discovered he was playing pipe, <laughs> pipe smoking. Yes. So what you needed to know about this character was all there in the script? 
Yeah, but not not in my head at the audition, because mm -hmm. you know there's so much in that script. Um, I could still be working at it. Did uh, you really? It, it's you know it really affords study. You know, really, you know, bump cheek on chair, kind of sit and study what what he means, what he hints at, wh where he's coming from, wh where it could lead you, and and you know tiny little details give you this. You, you can you can play play bloodhound for for months on end and always discover something new. Uh, really, when you watch the movie, um, you can watch it again. I've seen it nine times now, and I still discover uh, new things, and I really know the stuff. You know? New things about. New things about you know another level, another possibility, another facet, another another twist, another thought, another inspiration. You know something that has escaped your attention before, and um, you can do that with all his movies. What is it that you think you were able to accomplish in this performance? I think my accomplishment. Could possibly, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm just. I'm, I'm, I just want you to help me understand. This is not for you yeah, to yeah, toot yeah, your horn. Yeah, no, no. Um, but I, you know, I think I, I was really, really interested in what's behind the lines. Mm. There is so much, so much in this person's mind, and he gets so much of it onto the page. Um, I was just interested in finding out. So what was in Quentin Tarantino's mind? Well, the thing about language, for example, you know, he, he, this guy speaks several languages, okay, you know, there, there are a few people in this world who speak several languages. There's <laughs> like you. Of, no, well, it's, it's not such an accomplishment, yeah. really, but, but, you know, what does it mean to speak a language and to, to, to what aim? Uh, and what goals does a person employ the usage of language? And on what level does he communicate? Um, um, is it just verbalization of quotidian, you know, um, mm. necessities, or is he actually using language to put ideas into other people's minds? You know, is mm. language like something that creates? Uh, reality, or, or is something is language something that adapts to a reality? And and I think you know, Quentin, uh, being a poet, yes. uses uses language to create. So this character does the same thing. It, it is almost as if you understood as much about Quentin Tarantino as you understood about the character, because the two come together. Well, um, I don't know whether I understand it, but I certainly try to figure it out. And you know, when I first got the script, I, I couldn't really make sense of it. Yeah. And I thought, I thought maybe um, the right approach for me would to, would be to learn about Quentin. So learn about the source. Yes. Yes. So I uh, really studied the movies. You went in chronologically too. In, in chronological order, because you know, a, a, a true artist that he is, but even possibly even lesser artists would be subject to, uh, subjected to uh, you know an organic development, mm. and definitely. You know, if you start with uh, with um, um, Reservoir Dogs, you can mm. see that every movie is another development, another developmental phase in this person. So I arrived finally, after some effort, um, uh, at Death Proof. Yes. And I hadn't seen, that was the only one that I hadn't seen before. So I watched Death Proof, somewhat preoccupied, because I heard a lot about it. And interestingly enough, that's when it clicked. I kind of somehow you something. Got I, I I got it. At least I had the feeling. Yeah. Now you've said before that you know that even you you utilized in this sort of some of the training you'd had with Stella Adler. Yeah. I had the good fortune of. Um, 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 attending classes with her, but not the acting classes, but uh, the script interpretation. Yes. And um, that was one, one of the, if not the biggest impression in my training, and I, I claim that this was the most important thing in my training, because that, it taught me that approach. You know, she said, An Enemy of the People by Ibsen, you start with the first word, Henrik 
Ipsos. That's where you start before you open the open the uh, the script. So yeah, in a way, it was invaluable advice uh, with Quentin Tarantino because I didn't start with inglorious bastards. I started with Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Take a look. Here's another clip from this film, and we'll talk more about our remarkable performance. Here it is. <laughs> J'ai oublié de commander la crème. Un instant. A tomber la crème. Alors, Emmanuel. Puis-je vous appeler Emmanuel? Et donc, Emmanuel, expliquez-moi, comment se fait-il qu'une jeune femme comme vous, on arrive à posséder un cinéma Après vous. Verdict. Comme je disais, pas si mauvais. Give us an acting lesson. What did we see? We saw, first of all, a, a good a good thing to go by is we see a man and a woman. Yes. So you got some energy right there. Right. We see a slightly older man and a slightly younger woman. So that gives uh, that energy already a certain spin. Right. Knowing the, what was going on before, we see, we know, we know as an audience right. that, that he knows something. Yeah. We know that she fears something. So, so there's um, tension. We know the, the power, the proportions of power. We know that he is the powerful one, and she might end up being a victim. She's not a victim yet. Are we about to witness a victimization? Are we about to witness um, you know, exercise of power? Well, we expect it, given the uniform and given her you know, appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Given the the uh, the geographical uh, uh, circumstances, yet that expectation does not materialize. It's sort of a social exchange, like you know, a, a gentleman and a lady in a cafe. So there's already you know like a heap of stuff to work on yeah. as an actor. Here is what Quentin Tarantino has said: If you had not accepted the role, he might not. He would have given serious thought as to what to do about the film. Because it's such a central role. He had a huge star in Brad Pitt and others. But the protagonist, the tension, you know, somebody said great conflict is two characters. Well, um, I can only say that's up to him to say. Fair enough. Fair enough. Nothing that I could possibly. So, what did you learn from this? From this, I yeah. learned that um, um, I learned well, everything was learning. You know, yeah. um, um, I learned first of all, I, I relearned the the you know the enthusiasm and and, and uh, kind of uh, yeah. I hesitate to say it, but why should I hesitate? Love for my craft. Exactly right. Speak to that because I know you. I mean. That's the best thing. And Tell, it, what do you mean? I mean, you cannot do this without, as Ray Bradbury put it, zest and gusto. Yeah. And that you can learn from Quentin. You know, I was, I, you know, I was always trying to proceed with conviction, 
But the conviction alone, you know, my conviction very often took me, you know, the wrong direction, sideways. Quentin's conviction is forward, but the zest and the gusto and the, uh, and the curiosity um, uh, is without parallel. We're going to see what he said about this next, what he said about the character. But, but it, when you read this script, when you got this part, when you began filming this performance, you said to yourself, this is why I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. I said that to Quentin on the third day. I remember exactly up there in the hills next to the farmhouse, and I said, you know, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you remind me of the reason why I have become an actor. Let's show that scene first. Show the scene uh, up in the hills. Here it is. Now, if one were to determine what attribute the German people share with a beast, it would be the cunning and the predatory instinct of a hawk. But if one were to determine what attributes the Jews share with the beast, it would be that of the rat. If a rat were to walk in here right now as I'm talking, would you greet it with a source of your delicious milk? Probably not. I didn't think so. You don't like them. You don't really know why you don't like them. All you know is you find them repulsive. Consequently, a German soldier conducts a search of a house suspected of hiding Jews. Where does the hawk look? He looks in the barn, he looks in the attic, he looks in a cellar, he looks everywhere he would hide. But there's so many places it wouldn't have ever occurred to a hawk to hide. However, the reason the Führer has brought me off my Alps in Austria and placed me in French cow country today is because it does occur to me. Because I'm aware of what tremendous feats human beings are capable of once they abandon dignity. That's dramatic writing. Dramatic writing. Yeah. Roll tape. This is Quentin Tarantino on this program earlier talking about writing this character. Here he is. When I finished that script, I knew that Colonel Londa was uh, one of the greatest characters I've ever written and one of the greatest characters I will ever write. Uh, Hans Londa is played by Chris Christoph Waltz, a German yeah. actor. Yes, yeah, a German actor who was not at the height of his career. No, 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 he's a, a, no, he's a TV actor in and, Germany. And in fact, he said at, at, uh, at Cannes, yeah. he basically, in a very emotional moment, mm -hmm. said you had given back his career. Yeah. And you said something interesting, too. Mm -hmm. You gave me my movie. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. I mean, I, that dialogue could hardly be written, could it? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a thing, like I was saying before, when I wrote that script, I just knew that Londa was this, was, you know, I'm aware enough to know one of the, my best creations I've ever written, and he was one of them. So he says one of the best creations he's ever written. You never said, though. No, no. You um, gave me back my career. No, I didn't say that at all. What did you say? I said, you gave me back my vocation. A but very important difference. Absolutely. A that vocation is what you do. Yeah. A career is what people... A, a vocation is what you do if you're lucky, because, you know, you, f you feel that call, but that does not necessarily mean that you actually get to fulfill that. But that's exactly what I mean, you know. Quentin gave me the chance to actually, you know, live that call. It's kind of highfalutin, but no, true. But true. I mean, you feel yeah. it deeply here. Absolutely. Okay, roll tape. This is another part of the conversation because this is really interesting because we're talking about collaboration. Director, script, actor. Here it is. Everything he does is some version of an interrogation, and every piece of interrogation is uh, a, a piece of theater. Or, or, or uh, uh, mind game with uh, the participant. I'll just give you an example. And there was also, it helps describe how me and Christoph worked on the film. Just to give you an idea, um, in the script, uh, in the opening scene, when he's in interrogating this French farmer, it's the French farmer takes right. out a pipe right. and starts smoking right. it. And at some point, Londa says, hey, can I take out my pipe? And he goes, yes. And he pulls out this big giant calabash, you know, which is the pipe that Sherlock Holmes smokes. And, uh, and it's a very funny moment in the, in when it happens. And, and he drinks milk. Yeah, and he drinks the, the farmer's, he's a dairy farmer, so he drinks mm -hmm. his milk as opposed to wine. But he has this pipe. And uh, so 
so I wrote that in the script, and then I actually had a couple of more moments where I had Londa take out the pipe and like you know smoke and think, and so it was obviously it was Londa's pipe. But uh, I started thinking about it more and more as pre-production was going on, and I had dinner with Kristoff, and I asked him, I go, let me ask you a question. In the script, is, you know, it, it implies that this is definitely Londa's pipe, and he uses it to think. Uh, but let me ask you a question. What if Londa doesn't smoke a pipe? He knows the farmer smokes a pipe. And so at a certain point, he brings out this pipe. And what pipe does he bring out? He brings out the Sherlock Holmes pipe. One, you can say it's a sexual thing because my pipe is bigger than yours. All right. And the other thing, you can say, I know you're lying and I got you. I've got the Sherlock Holmes pipe. You know, so maybe he doesn't smoke a pipe at all. It's simply just an interrogation technique to throw the farmer, uh, you know, send him more to hell. And I, so what do you think, Christoph? He goes, oh, he doesn't smoke a pipe at all. It is simply an act of theater. This had to be fun, didn't it? Right. I love this man. <laughs> yeah. So it changed what? I mean, so so here you are have received all of this acclaim. It renewed your faith in your vocation. I know. And it it, it I was getting comfortable with um with um well, that would be a bit harsh to say, but, uh, you know, I almost said I was getting comfortable with resignation. Acceptance? Well, no. No, never acceptance. No, you know, like, like edging towards bitterness, <laughs> but um, still being stubborn enough to hang on. Yeah. And, um, you know, Quentin sort of plucked me out of that. Mm -hmm. He plucked me out of negativity. You know, um, he plucked me out of, of uh, um, um, sort of self-pitying. He plucked me out of um, feeling victimized. You know, all, all these, all these self-indulgent actor things that, that you know, drive some of us uh, into alcoholism. But um, I, there was no danger for me, thank God, you know. But, but uh, you know, becoming an actor is one thing and being an actor, another. And uh, living the life of an actor, yet another. And making a living, yet another aspect of the same thing. And uh, why would it be, um, in, in acting, why would it be different from any other thing? You know, it's, yeah, you, 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 you enter with conviction and zest and gusto, and um, only, a, you know, very, very few are granted the, to, to sustain that. Um, so, so I was, I was trying to find outlets, you know, I was trying to do this and that and, and sort of, you know, it, it, trying not to, not to really go over the edge and really become bitter. Um, you know, in the course of, of, of 30 some years, things accumulate, um, it's, it's, it's natural and it's, it's, um, self-evident in a way. We're all glad you did. <laughs> well, thank you. That you met Quentin Tarantino, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. that you had a chance to show remarkable um, everything. I mean, it's just an amazing performance, and, and it, I'm not the first to say that, but I thank you for coming to this table. Thanks very much. Christopher Walsh nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his performance in Inglorious Bastards. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.